Hi, welcome to another set of uh, lectures. This time it's on standing wave and resonance. <laughs> Hopefully by now you're not dreading these yet, especially in light of last week. But um, now that we've done all that hard work, we have looked at and come up with the wave equation. We've also dealt with the superposition principle, as well as the reflection at an interface. We can now put that all together to talk about the phenomenon of standing waves and ultimately about resonance. Now resonance, resonance here, you might have heard of it in your 221 course, but here we have a slightly different uh, meaning for it. It's a slightly different context. Uh, some very, very much related, but in this context, resonance, um, it's a little bit different. And I would argue it's even more important than the resonance you you would have seen it's much more prevalent because it deals with traveling waves and how it merged into standing waves. So let's get started with that. Let's look at how standing wave comes about. So standing wave is thus called because of the way it ends up looking and we'll see what how it looks like and it's actually a very apt description. Where it comes from, it comes from the fact that a wave um, crashes of interface and reflects and interferes with itself. So as a quick reminder, if I have a wave that comes in, just to give it a little bit of symmetry and it's gonna be traveling this way, it hits a certain interface. When it comes out, if you remember, not only does it travel the other way, it also gets flipped upside down because this is a infinitely hard wall. So this is, for instance, a fixed band, just to be um, very, very clear. Now, for a pulse like that, you have one pulse coming in, another pulse coming out, and they only overlap in the very short instance where the pulse is passing, kind of passing through the interface, so to speak. But then most of the time you have a pulse, a good looking pulse coming in, good looking pulse coming out. However, if we consider plane waves. So friendly reminder here, the plane wave we can describe as a cosine curve. And unlike the pulse, which starts and ends, the cosine curve just kind of spread out through all space. It keeps coming. There's more and more of it. It goes on forever. So when, what happens is when the wave hits the interface, so it travels in that way, there's a part of it that would go through the interface, and then that's going to ultimately give us the reflection, which is also going that way, but then it gets reflected. Right behind it, there's another wave that looks just like it. So that's going to interact with our reflected wave. So how does this wave reflect? Well, let's put, put this in red. As we know because it's reflected, the, it gets flipped horizontally, so it goes the other way. But because we have a fixed end here, we're going to flip it vertical as well. Once again, with the pi phase shift or the plane wave or just the negative sign. And when that comes back, oh, well, that's just going to add up onto that. And so ultimately, what we end up with it's a wave that's twice as high. Uh, let's see if I can squeeze this in here. So there's your zero point, and then you end up with a wave that's twice as high when they add up superposition. Okay. A little later on, the wave has moved forward a little bit more. Thing. And then this part is going to get reflected. Uh, once again, we flip horizontal to go backwards to vertical because of the phase shift. And as it lines up, well, it's going to give you nothing actually. Everything cancels out. And then later on, it moves again. And the wave now, next part of the wave, 
just like that. So bam, 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 bam. This part gets reflected once again. So we try and do this fairly quickly. Horizontal, flip vertical, and like that. Eh, not super scale drawing, but you can see how as it comes back, you can just add up the other ways and it gives you something that looks like this. And then later on, glass, a little bit of the cycle, which is going to happen very much the same as the second scenario here. So that becomes something like this, and you end up with, once again, a flat line. So what's actually happening is you have a wave traveling to the right, adding up to a wave traveling to the left, but effectively what you see is a wave that doesn't seem to move. It just kind of have the same shape but it bobs up and down, up and down, up and down. And that's why we call these standing waves because it doesn't look like the wave is going anywhere. It just stays in place and stands still and moves up and down like that. Just a couple little bit of vocabulary. You see there's these points where these red dots are. The wave, sorry, the string doesn't seem to move. We call those nodes. Um, these stationary points where the wave doesn't seem to be doing anything to the string. Those are called nodes. And then in between the nodes, we have the places where it moves the most, and we call those the anti-nodes. And so this is the basic look of the, the um, standing waves. And we can now look at how that comes about using our equations. And